Here you will have free English and French videos to increase your skills to talk and to immigrate to Canada, you will have these videos from the partnership with Canada Smart Mind. Subscribe yourself to not miss any video. This is what you are going to have, 1. A grammar rule, to know how to say your things. 2. A text, to improve your pronunciation. 3. An exercise, to consolidate your knowledge. You will learn how to speak English and French. You will learn how to settle in Canada. Subscribe and ring the bell to keep receiving these videos. Do not have concerns anymore. Improve your skills of listening, reading, writing, and speaking to get a higher score on international tests and immigrate to Canada or to any other English or French-speaking country. Pay close attention to this video to find out how. Now, here we go. 1. Grammar Rule. Telephone English. This section is all about speaking on the phone in English. It includes a vocabulary list and quiz, common phrases and tips, and a series of practice exercises old-style landline phone and modern muscle phone if you answer the phone and you hear someone speaking in English, don't be afraid to reply. The fear of talking on the phone in a second language will disappear if you practice often. Most people find speaking on the phone in a language that's not their own quite difficult at first because they can't see the other person's eyes, mouth and body movements, or body language. In face-to-face -face conversation we communicate, not only with words, but also with our eyes, with facial expressions like smiles and frowns, and by moving our hands and bodies. When speaking on the phone, however, all you can use is spoken language. But speaking on the phone will become much easier after you've learned the special vocabulary and phrases in the pages that follow and had a chance to practice them. Telephones have changed a lot over the years. Before the first mobile phones, or cell phones, were invented over 30 years ago, nearly everyone used phones connected to telephone lines. These lines ran to telephone exchanges in which calls were connected through a switchboard. These landline phones are still being used in some places, but most people now use mobile phones or smartphones. These phones send signals through the air, rather than through physical telephone lines. The most advanced phones are called smartphones. These are like small computers with many functions besides making telephone calls. You can send text messages, take and send photos, record and play audio and video files, connect to the internet, and do much more. Even though telephone technology has changed a lot over the years, the language and vocabulary used when making a call has remained mostly the same, telephone phrases, here are some common phrases and sentences you can use when speaking on the telephone. The informal phrases are mostly for family and friends. The formal phrases are for business and official calls and for calls to important people. Caller unknown means the person answering the phone doesn't know who's calling. This mostly occurs when answering a call to a landline phone without caller ID or to a mobile phone or smartphone from a number that isn't listed in the phone's contacts, answering the phone, informal, hello. Matt here, caller unknown, hi, Jody. How are you, hey, Justin. What's up, answering the phone, formal, hello Serena speaking, caller unknown, John Sales speaking. Who's calling please, caller unknown, Dr. Martin's office. May I know who's calling please, caller unknown, thank you for calling Jeans Plus. Jody speaking, Hello Maria. Nice to hear from you, hello Drive Jones. How can I help you, City Library. Kim speaking. What can I do for you, Robert, introducing yourself, hey George. It's Lisa calling. Informal, hello, this is Julie Madison calling, hi. It's Angelina from the dentist's office here. Informal, hello Sayoko. This is Alan calling from Big Boys Auto Body, asking to speak with someone, hi. Is Nina there? Informal, can you put Michael on? Informal, can I talk to Joseph? Tell him Marilyn's calling. Informal, may I speak to Mr. Green in the accounting department please? Good morning. Is Dr. Martin available please? Connecting someone, just a sec. I'll get him. Informal, hang on a moment. I'll see if she's in. Informal, one moment please. I'll see if he's available, hold the line please. I'll put you through in a moment, please hold while I put you through to the manager's office, all of our staff are busy at this time. Please hold for the next available person. Making a request 
Could you please repeat that? Would you mind spelling that for me? Could you speak up a little please? Can you speak a little slower please? My English isn't very good, I'm afraid. Could you let me know when she'll be in the office please? Would you mind calling back in an hour I'm in a meeting just now? Can you call again I think we have a bad connection. Please hold for just a minute. I have another call. Please don't call this number again. Taking a message. Can I take a message? Would you like to leave a message? Sammy's not in. I can tell him you called if you like. Informal. No, that's okay. I'll call him later. Informal. I'm sorry, but Lisa's not here at the moment. Can I take a message? I'm afraid he's stepped out. Would you like to leave a message? She's busy right now. Would you like her to return your call? He's in a meeting at the moment. Can he call you back when he's free? Fine. I'll let him know you called. I'll make sure she gets your message. Leaving a message. Can I leave a message? Would you mind giving her a message? Would it be possible to leave a message? Could you tell her Jonathan called? Could you ask him to call Paul when he gets in? I don't think he has my number. Do you have a pen handy? Thanks. It's James Brown and my number is 222-3456. Confirming a message, let me repeat, but just to make sure. It's James Brown at 222-3456. Was that 555 Charles Street, apartment 66? I'll make sure he gets the message. It's Johnny, right and you won't be at the club until midnight. Informal, okay, got it. I'll let him know, informal, answering machine and voicemail phrases, hey, Brad here. What's up let me know after the tone, okay, informal, hi, this is Liz. I'm sorry I can't take your call right now, but if you leave a message after the tone, I'll get back to you, as soon as I can, you've reached 222-6789. Please leave a message after the tone. Thank you, thank you for calling Dr. Minden's office. Our hours are 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday to Friday. Please, call back during these hours or leave a message after the tone. If this is an emergency please, call the hospital at 333-7896 you have reached Steve James, your guide to computer technology. Unfortunately, I can't take your call right now, but if you leave me a message and include your name and telephone number, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. You can also contact me via email at computic at xyz.com. Thank you for calling, leaving an answering machine or voicemail message. Hey, Makako. It's Yuka. Call me, okay, informal, hello, this is Ricardo calling. Could you please return my call as soon as possible? My number is 3345689. Thank you, hi, Anderson. This is Marina from the doctor's office calling. I just wanted to let you know that you're due for a checkup this month. Please call us to make an appointment at your earliest convenience, ending a conversation, well, I guess I'd better get going. Talk again soon, okay, informal, thanks for calling. Bye for now, I have to let you go now, I have another call coming through. I'd better run, I'm afraid that's my other line, I'll talk to you again soon. Bye Jules, sometimes we have to spell something over the telephone like an address or a name. Native, English speakers often use a special alphabet when they spell over the phone. For example, the postcode is B2V3A8. That's B for Bravo, number 2, V for Victor, number 3, A for Alpha, number 8. Now, here is the grammar rule that you can use while you are talking. Remember, you got to have the grammar rules, the pronunciation, and the vocabulary to sustain your conversation. I wish I could say some soft words to you and cool you down, but here is the thing, you have to go deep into your practice to develop your skills. We post here the basics of grammar, pronunciation, and vocabulary. So hit the subscribe button and bell icon in order to receive the other videos and increase your ability to speak. Also, contact us to see how easy and cheap is to enroll in our teaching program, where you can have videos, exercises, and books to support your work and to increase your performance. And share this video with your friends and help them out. 2. Text Schools in the United States are welcoming back students to classrooms this autumn. But they are facing a new problem. A shortage of teachers and school workers. Districts have faced shortages before, but many now say it is the worst it has ever been.
The country's public schools have struggled for years with teacher shortages, especially in math, science, special education, and languages. But the COVID-19 crisis has worsened the problem. The pandemic has led to an increase in retirements and resignations. Districts across the country are reporting teacher shortages. In South Dakota, one district started the school year with 120 unfilled teacher positions. Across Texas, the main districts in the cities of Houston and Waco reported hundreds of teacher openings at the start of the year. Many schools across the country have had to close classrooms because of a lack of teachers. In Michigan, East Point Community Schools moved its middle school back to online learning last week because it does not have enough teachers. The small district north of Detroit has 43 positions open, one quarter of its teachers. When several middle school teachers resigned last week, the district started teaching online classes to avoid sending in inexperienced substitute teachers, said spokeswoman Caitlin Keenitz. This is obviously not ideal, but we're able to make sure they're getting each subject area from a teacher certified to teach it, Keenitz said. The National Education Association surveyed 2,690 educators in June. 32% said the pandemic drove them to leave teaching earlier than expected. Another survey by the Rand Corporation found that teachers had high levels of stress and were three times more likely than adults in other professions to experience depression. A school district in California's West Contra Costa County is considering hiring out-of-state math educators to teach online while a substitute teacher watches students in person. This is the worst shortage of labor we have ever had, said Assistant Superintendent Tony Wold. We opened this year with 50 teaching positions open. That means students are going to 50 classrooms that do not have a permanent teacher. There are 100 more openings for aides who help teach English learners and special needs students. There is also a shortage of cleaners, food services workers, and others, Wold said. Money is not the main problem. School districts have the money to employ more teachers and workers, thanks to billions of dollars in federal and state pandemic relief assistance. There are just not enough people looking for work. Mike Gelber is the assistant superintendent at the Morongo Unified School District in Southern California. We're all competing for a shrinking piece of the pie. I don't know if everybody is getting snatched up, or if they don't want to teach during COVID, he said. The Morongo School District of 8,000 students has put job advertisements in newspapers, radio, and social media. Teachers have also put now hiring messages into their students' lunch containers. The messages include a list of openings. Class sizes are also getting bigger. Mount Diablo Unified School District serves 28,000 students near San Francisco, California. It has had to fill several elementary school classrooms at 32 students, the most students there can be. At first, about 150 children signed up for online learning. But with COVID-19 infections rising, 
the number increased to 600 by the time school began. The same happened in Fresno, where enrollment in online learning went from 450 to 3,800 by the time school started. Of the 12 officials interviewed by the Associated Press in California districts, only one said it was not facing shortages. Long Beach Unified, the state's fourth-largest district, was prepared for the worker shortage. Last spring, it worked hard to hire 400 more teachers. We probably would have experienced the same shortages as others, said Long Beach Assistant Superintendent David Zaid. But we became much more assertive, and as a result, we are not in the same position. I'm Dan Novak. Remember to go to the description and check the links for Canadian companies searching for employees outside of Canada. Also, there is a link to contact us in the description. Since you can count only on yourself, make your inscription and hit the like and the bell icons to receive our videos. 3. Exercise. Quiz COVID-19 creates U.S. shortage of teachers, school workers. What is true about the teacher and school staff shortage this year? Schools have never struggled with shortages before. The pandemic has led to an increase in retirements and resignations. Districts say the shortages are not as bad this year. The shortages have led to smaller class sizes. Correct. The pandemic has led to an increase in retirements and resignations. What did Tony Wold say about worker shortages in his district? Teachers do not want to teach during the COVID-19 pandemic. Only 50 classrooms have a permanent teacher. The district will have to hire out-of-state math educators. It is the worst labor shortage they have ever had. Correct. It is the worst labor shortage they have ever had. Why did East Point Community Schools move its middle school online? Many of the district's middle school teachers resigned, moving. Online let the school avoid having to use inexperienced substitute teachers. There are more than 40 teacher openings. All of the above are true. Correct. All of the above are true. Why is there a shortage of teachers and workers? There are few people looking for work. Schools do not have enough money to pay them. The substitute teachers are inexperienced. Federal and state pandemic assistance did not provide enough aid. Correct. There are few people looking for work. Tell us your questions and pretty soon, you will see what we have to say. Leave your comments about this video, and we will know what you like, and what we can do to better help you. Thank you for watching this video, and be sure, that we will be with you in this journey to turn your dreams into reality. Keep up there, and write your story, I'll see you at the next one. Bye for now.